So Trevor and I met over the phone um, years ago when I used to write for Yoga Digest magazine. I got to interview him over the phone. And then thanks to uh, my friend Dallas, who is uh, works for Deepak Chopra, she produced this amazing event called the Global Meditation. And me and Trevor were a part of that. Trevor played the music and I uh, taught the yoga class after Deepak's meditation. And this is the third time. So I'm super excited to have you this. here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Great. You know, I wanted to start with a really fun question only because, Trevor, I'm a hopeless romantic. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, so I want to know how you and Emery met. Emery is his wife. That's a really long story, but I can I can shorten it. I actually was friends with her family uh, first because we at our shows going on tour we would we were raising money for our ashram in india because our teacher takes care of um like orphan children as well over there so we kind of just had very low-key just at shows would kind of raise money whatever send the money and her family was very um helpful in in gathering funds and very supportive of the project so i kind of knew her mom and her family before i knew her at a show, her mom was like, oh, uh, my, you know, one of my daughters is going to India. Um, would it be okay if she came to the ashram? And I thought, oh, yeah, that'd be great. You know, like, I never thought that she would actually come just because where the ashram is is kind of off the, the beaten path, I guess. Um, but, yeah, long story short, she showed up, and, and we, we met over there and came back, and then I kind of Facebook stalked her a little bit, and... <laughs> The rest was history. That was it. But you know, we were born in the same hospital. Isn't that weird? I know. It's crazy, right? And we met in India, and now we're married. So, yeah. It's so cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Awesome. I love that you were born in the same hospital. Isn't that what, what's, weird? What a neat coincidence, yeah, but there weird. are no coincidences, right? Yeah. Everything's on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I, I watched um, your, I saw you're coming out with a new docu-series, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you ready to talk about that, even though not all three three parts have come oh, out yeah. yet? Oh, yeah, go shoot away. Cool, yeah. yeah. So uh, if you yeah. don't know, you can go to Trevor's website or to his Instagram, and it's airing. He's doing a three-part docu-series about finding home with yeah, yourself. Yeah. And I wanted to find out, I wanted to ask you, what, what does that mean? What do you mean by home? And share us about your journey. Well, I think it's kind of an ever uh, evolving kind of process, I guess, you know, because um, just from my own experience, I, you know, I started kind of playing music really young and, and, and found myself at a young age just on the road, you know, all the time. In a sense, you know, it's almost like I didn't have any grounding, you know, I didn't have any anything to stand on, you know. Um, and because of that, I always had this kind of obsession with, you know, what home really is. You know, if I'm just moving around all the time and like this, it's, it's, it's just been a whole learning process. And the things that, you know, I think when we think of home, obviously we think of where we were born or where our house is or where our family is, where our friends are. And you, if you identify with only that and you take those things away, then you're going to be in a little bit of trouble, you know, because... Th those things leave and then you, oh well where's my home you know and I, I had to yeah just from an early point had to kind of learn to search for that feeling of home or that place of home within my own heart and soul and um, it's a process it's it's a learn you know a huge learning process and every day you're learning 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 and, and the documentary kind of just talks about um, yeah the journey of kind of where I was born and then um, going through some dark periods of confusion and trying to find that space and then hopefully concluding with, you know, something good, you know, that um, found some peace within myself. But, you know, that's why we practice yoga. You know, yoga is a tool, an ancient science to um, bring us into our true nature, you know. Uh, which is already within us, obviously, but it's about kind of peeling off the layers and getting present in that space. So, you know, I do it through music. Some people do it through yoga. Some people, you know, 
it's 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 all the same thing. Oh, we're all trying to go to the same place. Oh, I love that we're all trying to go to the same place. Yeah, Ooh, that's a good one. You know, I love that you said that, Trevor, because I often myself search for approval and happiness outside of me. And then at the end of the day, when I come home by myself to my little apartment, it's just me. And right. then I feel empty again because I don't have that external stuff. So right, I love what right. you're saying. Yeah. Well, I love you. I love you, it's too. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor Hall said he loved me. Do you love me? Do you hear that? Do you... Do you love me though? I, I um, I've loved you for ten years since Lime Tree came just, out. Just just say it for my own peace. I love you, Trevor. I love you, Trevor. Okay, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> I like how you made me look you in the eyes. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so you also talked about um, getting into the state of flow, uh, and I'm really interested in your in your thoughts on that because I I feel like our life. Our only job in life is to show up and continually and continually pull ourselves back in alignment with our soul versus mm -hmm. our ego or our personality. It's like all about moving everything towards our our soul's truth. So, uh, you know, where do you get, how do you get into that space to mm -hmm. find your inspiration to write all this phenomenal music? Ever since I was a young boy, you know, music was always this kind of shelter for me. It was always kind of this shelter like a healing balm you know from my mind and something happened you know in my chemistry when i was listening to music or i was playing music it was like everything got quiet you know within myself and i wasn't reasoning about anything i wasn't like how is this working or i wasn't like oh i gotta stay here it was just this space you know and um for me, it always comes back to that, you know, it always comes back to playing music and, and because that is the thing that brings me into a state where I'm finally out of my own story. You know, it's kind of ironic for me because it's like my career is like Trevor Hall, you know, but I, when I play, I don't, it's the thing that brings me out of myself. It's the thing that brings me out of all the self-created, you know, things in my head or like whatever it's just a state of peace and i live for that state you know it's the thing that truly keeps me alive you know if i i think if i didn't have music in my life it'd be tough you know um and so the thing that keeps me going is knowing that i get to visit that space and also share that space with other people you know when it's really like flow you're talking about flow state like when it's really flowing well like the high for me is when you know whatever there's the stage and then there's like audience right but then something happens where there's no more stage there's no more audience there's no more performer there's no more singer there's no more listener everything kind of turns into this like cremation ground right and all that stuff is burned away all the differences that you know divide us separate us whatever mental constructs all those things kind of melt away they burn away and we're all just listening together. We're all just in this, I don't know, weird presence. So that it doesn't happen every night and don't get your hopes up, it might not happen today. But I'm just telling you that that is the state, the space. Um, and it can't be forced, you know, it can't be forced. And I think, you know, when we're talking about flowing, there's no trying, you know, and I feel like so much of us today, myself included, we're just trying so hard. We're just ah, da, 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 da. and we think that we're gonna attain it whatever it is that piece by our own effort but I think that 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 space I think you know is is about relinquishing effort relinquishing control kind of surrendering surrendering to that space surrendering to this great cosmic whatever energy that's doing all this you know um, that's my own interpretation. It doesn't mean it's right or yeah. wrong. It's just, you know, that's what I think. Uh, I love that, too, because I, I call that dropping in. Um, my friend Lori, I love, she came up with this term. She called it Kim Mode. And um, 
But I, I know what you mean because when, when I teach yoga in my classes, I um, always pray that when I step into the room, especially if I'm stressed and I'm not wanting to teach, I just pray that I drop in and that you know spirit speaks through me. And then uh, you know it just right. you're like, whoa, where did that come from? That was pretty cool. What I yeah, just said, yeah. just it just rolls off your mouth, off yeah, your tongue. Yeah, yeah. So and then your that. person comes back in. And you're like, I don't sound as cool. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like, I, it's true. It's weird. It's like, oh man. But anyway. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> so the unique thing about Trevor, you guys, is that he never wanted to be a musician that performed and that toured around and now it's become his livelihood. How do you who know that? Well, because remember, because I, I told <laughs> I, I like to. I have to stalk people if I'm going to interview them. <laughs> so what's the question? Sorry, <laughs> no. I, I interrupted you. So I wanted to to hear um, what was your big break. For me, I, I don't think I had a big break. Um, I didn't have like a hit single or whatever that was played all over the radio, or I I wasn't like on TV or. Um, I didn't have like a moment that kind of whatever I guess catapulted me. I mean, my my journey through the music industry has been a roller coaster and has been a very gradual, steady, you know, climb. In the beginning, I got signed, you know, to this huge record label right when I got out of high school, and you know, it was all planned wow. out. You know, oh, I'm gonna like release a record and whatever, be famous, and it goes like this. You know. And it didn't go like that. You know, I, re I, I recorded two albums. The record company didn't like them, so they, they uh, shelved them, you know. And then for three or four years, I was kind of sitting in limbo. I couldn't release music. It was just a nightmare, you know. And then they dropped me from the label. And then I had to find another label, you know, to kind of get picked up by. And then they were really different. They were kind of cool, but... Um, they allowed me to do what I wanted to do, and, and I was really grateful for that. To, so what I'm, it wasn't like, you know, you have a hit song and, and whatever. And sometimes, you know, it, in my own, you know, self, I question, oh, why did, why did it happen this way? You know, why didn't I, like, some of my friends, you know, they play for, like, three years, and they're like, boom, you know? And I'm like, oh, I've been doing this for, like, 15 years. Is, is this, like, should I... You know, should I stop or, you know, I have all these self, you know, doubt, all these questions. Um, but in the end, I think for me, I think I believe that there's a spirit, you know, a, a mother watching over all of us, watching over me. And um, I think that if I was given that much power at a young age, then I would have probably abused it and would have lost myself. And maybe it's, you know, I feel like that being is, is just giving me j just what I can handle, you know, every single moment. So maybe I couldn't handle it and um, at that young age. But honestly, in the last couple years, I, I feel um, a really amazing sense of gratitude. You know, it's one thing to like practice gratitude, like wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, be like, I love my life. I love my life. I love my life. You know, you're screaming, you know, but it's one thing when it, it comes forth, you know, naturally from your own being. And um, yeah, just the last couple years, I, I get up on stage or play for people and I just realize how big of a blessing this is. And um, the the blessing of the opportunity to share that space and and ever since that has come it's kind of funny like more things have kind of opened up for me I think before that in the past I was kind of jaded and you know I don't know so I'm in a good place in in the my career now and I am grateful that it's been a slow slow climb and steady climb and um, I'm kind of an introvert so I don't think it would be like that good for me if it was just a lot at once you know oh, I love that thanks for sharing that yeah uh, I also want to hear about the work that charity work that you and Emery do in India I went over to India in 2007 and fell in love and with the culture and the people and everything and and uh, began kind of practicing that 
I guess, a way of life. And uh, the, the main thing that stole my heart was this ashram in, in Allahabad um, where our teacher stays. And, and these kids just like, you know, they just, yeah, took it out of me. And, um, they, you know, when I got back, it's just something all I could think about, you know. And um, our ashram is run by our teacher who's a monk, you know, so he does not, he's not making any money. Only money that comes in is through donation and whatever. And, and uh, so he, he takes care of all these kids, you know, himself, you know, um, feeding them, clothing them, paying for their school, but also teaching them, you know, traditional hatha yoga and, and chanting and Vedic, you know, um, wisdom and all these things that are kind of being lost in India because of the westernization and modernization. Um, it, it's an ancient kind of system called Gurukul. That was the ancient way, you know, where these families would send their kids to an ashram and then they would learn their culture and and um yeah unfortunately that's being lost so that kind of really hit me you know and I really believed in in the place and the kids and it was just out of love I just thought oh I can just raise money at shows put out we literally had a cardboard box like a shoe box and it just said donations and that was it and then over time we raised enough money to um build a girls ashram just across the river so now we have a whole girls ashram where there's like 12 or 15 girls being taken care of over there and so now we're supporting both ashrams but it's really it's not like this you know we we have like our guruji has like an atm card and we have like a checking account we send the money to the checking account that's about it like we don't have like a 501 seat through all these things um but it's it's just been an amazing experience over the years because now when we go there and we see like this new room built or this wall built or like whatever i see like all this i see like the energy of people at like concerts you know and i'm like man i wonder if they kn know you know like where their energy went like actually went like it's amazing you see this kind of unification between you know across waters across seas and it's just been a wonderful experience and we're just kind of naturally letting it grow i love that you're helping out all those kids in india that's amazing yeah. <laughs> well trevor thank you so so thank much for so being much. on our podcast yeah. thank you thank, thank you, you so thank much. you thank so you. much